Thank you for joining today's session focusing on PTC's windshield quality management solution. This overview will be highlighting the features and the benefits of a closed-loop PLM QMS solution for medical devices. In our overview today, per the agenda, the focus will be on these mandatory compulsory processes in support of ISO 13485 and the harmonization of these processes across the full life cycle of the digital product definition. Before starting in on specific medical device material, I would first like to mention that most of PTC's customers, if not all, including our strategic medical device customers such as Boston Scientific, Philips, and Stryker, while appreciating the comprehensive capabilities of Windchill, are looking for easy means for a large percentage of their user base, up to 80% in many cases, to easily and intuitively view and print, search for information within the PLM system, whether that be a document, part, drawing, or CAD model, author, whether our desktop integration capabilities, authors can use standard desktop programs like Microsoft Word to author documents, but can easily check in those documents to the PLM system directly. Drag and drop is also available via Windows Explorer, and it becomes your user interface for the PLM document management. And leverage reporting. The manager may be looking for reporting functionality that is easy to use and learn, that shows them up-to-date information, whether that be documentation, parts, engineering changes, or any other data that is maintained in the system. So what I'd like to do is walk through three examples of what PTC has done to assist our customers in doing just that, and then go into more specifics of the PTC medical device solution. The first example that I would like to demonstrate is PTC Navigate View. PTC Navigate View has been developed on the ThingWorks platform and consists of a number of role-based applications that are segmented by the different types of information as seen here in this dashboard. Specific data could be design files, drawings, building materials, parts, lists, documents, etc. These Navigate applications provide an easy to learn and use means of searching, viewing, and printing information. As an example, I can search for a document. This brings me to a very simple search screen. It also shows results from my previous searches. I can type in a number, a name, or a wildcard search. It finds my document and it brings me right to the details page for the document. In this particular case, it's high level information, the name, the number, the version. I can also see the native content, a link to the content, as well as a link to the representation. If I take a look at the representation, which happens to be a PDF, I can now see the document. This document has been published with the Adobe Experience Manager server, and as we see here, it comes with a cover sheet as well as watermarks. Another example I'd like to demonstrate for you interacting with Windchill and the information stored in the, in the base PLM product is what we call desktop integration. Desktop integration is where we embedded Windchill commands directly within the Microsoft Suite Office products. So for example, in this Word document, if I go over to my Windchill tab, I now see a number of commands here that are related to the information that's stored in Windchill. If I wanted to add a new document, I could do that. If I want to come in and open up a particular document that's already stored in Windchill, here I can see in Windows Explorer, I have the different context for Windchill, whether it be a library, organization, a product, or a project. So I can go in and search for information directly within Windchill using the tools that I'm comfortable on my desktop. We also have the ability to work with Windows Explorer. So for example, if I come to Windows Explorer, I can now see my Windchill documents here. If I drill down into the different context, for example, if I want to come into a library, I see the libraries that are established within Windchill. And I can actually do a drag and drop. So if I want to come into my DTI documents and I want to take one of my Word documents, say a standard operating procedure here, I can just grab that document and drag and drop. And it brings up the document creation panel for Windchill. So I can set the information that I want to store with the document. Here you can see some of the standard document types that are with the medical device solution. I can add different information that I want to add here. And say OK. It now takes that document and checks it into that library within Windchill. The next example I'd like to show is reporting. PTC's medical device solution comes with a number of out of the box reports. Here I see an example of a document report. More specifically, I'm looking at my control document dashboard. Here I can see in the different forms of the graph, I can see 
the life cycle states for the documents and I can also see the numbers for the documents. It's very easy to learn and very easy to use tool. So here I have the options of setting specifically the information that I'd like to see in my report. And I can also add additional information or different charts to this. So in addition to that, if I wanted to add the version for the documents and I can set the chart format and I can add that to my report. I'll also mention too, as you select in any of these charts, you notice that the table at the bottom of the screen updates for that specific information that's contained within that particular section of the report. Most customers digital medical engineering journey starts with the understand phase. In this phase, companies gather information relevant to their digital product definition and the systems and data locations to develop the foundation in support of the medical device compulsory processes to include doc control, design control, kappa, nonconformance, and complaints. This will now allow companies to evolve and advance their products and processes to the next level to deliver new value and ultimately striving for an outperform stage to create a competitive advantage. In support of 13485, which defines a whole life cycle approach to product design, manufacturing, and service, PTC has developed best practices for the core quality solutions for managing the processes for doc control, design control, kappa, nonconformance, and complaints. Shown here is a partial list of key capabilities within each process. We will review these in more detail throughout the presentation. Implementing any of these five medical device processes will make a dramatic positive impact on any organization and encourage confidence in the transformation along the digital medical engineering journey. Document control. PTC understands the mission critical nature of document management for our medical device and life science customers. In our latest offering, PTC has developed a number of new out of the box capabilities specifically developed to shorten the time to value for customers using our solution. The approach taken here also allows our customer to use our work as a guide to further develop our solution to exactly fit your document management needs. Within PTC Doc Control, companies are able to implement a standard ISO 13485 document control process, easily create control and distribute SOPs and policies, intuitively ensure access and distribution is limited to correct versions of the document and the responsible personnel, automatic generation of training tasks when changes are made to SOPs and policies, and provides management real-time access to reports, training records, and dashboards. Within the doc control solution, there is a number of essential capabilities. Predefined document types out of the box, such as controlled documents and approved records, configurable attributes and workflows, training and tracking, being able to define, approve, and monitor training and tracking against document types, Document publishing, the PDF, the published cover sheets and watermarks. Electronic signature for complete configurability of e-signature at all appropriate areas of the process. Change control, fully integrated change control to create audible records. And Microsoft integration, integration with desktop tools such as Microsoft Word and Windows Explorer. And enterprise collaboration, being able to share information across the enterprise as appropriate. Design control. Design control designates the application of a formal methodology for conducting product development activities. It is mandatory by regulation to implement the standard ISO 9001 risk-based design control practice when designing and developing products within the regulated medical device industry. Design control needs to adopt a proven and consistent product realization process, generation of accurate design history files and device master records, product planning to understand product status and regulatory milestones and what has changed, and integration with Microsoft Project to operationalize planning and execution at the enterprise level. There are a number of essential capabilities for design control and can be found in PTC's design control solution. Bill of information structure, not just bill of material, but all information that represents the digital product definition. Integrated change control for audible records, Design reviews to support a variety of reviews on digital product definition information, both formal and informal. FMEA and risk management integration to capture harm hazard codes and risk analysis. Design history file device master record. Provide a pre-configured files to collect this design information in compliance with 21 CFR part 820. Product planning for phase gates and new part introduction, a phase gate milestone planning process, 
and parts classification for classifying parts for streamlining part reuse. Kappa. Implementation of a standard closed loop corrective action, preventive action process. Corrective actions are typically reactive measures, including root cause analysis. Preventive actions are typically proactive measures. The Kappa solution will help speed the resolution of quality issues across the product life cycle. Performs closed loop root cause analysis. Gains a holistic view across quality inputs, deviations, nonconformances, and complaints, and fully integrated with the change process. PTC's Kappa solution has a number of essential capabilities to include integration with the change control process to create audible records, rapid entry for access, quick access for Kappa capture, standard ISO 9001 Kappa process pre-configuration to include predefined but configurable workflows, integration with bill material parts and documents, automatically generation of change notices, linking to all quality records within the system, perform root cause analysis, and multiple independent action threads for complex kappas and also integrated reporting and effective monitoring nonconformance the windshield nonconformance management best practice is a closed loop nonconformance process a compulsory quality process which enables companies to capture and process all types of internal product material and process nonconformances the nc procedure shall address the identification documentation evaluation segregation and disposition of nonconforming product the evaluation of nonconformance shall include a determination of, for the need of an investigation and notification of the persons or organizations responsible for the nonconformance. Nonconformance management needs to capture, manage, and rapidly resolve manufacturer supplier issues, get a clear visibility across many potential sources of quality issues, coordinate a root cause analysis with PLM changes, enterprise reporting and visibility in the quality trends, and escalation to CAPA and SCAR as needed. PTC's nonconformance solution has a number of essential capabilities to include e-signature in support of 21 CFR Part 11, as an example, use as is, rapid entry screens and data entry to accelerate the creation of a nonconformance implementation, configurable screens, workflows, labels, and dropdowns allow companies to tailor best practice to their specific needs, standard ISO 9001 nonconformance process with material review boards, sub-workflow processes, detailed disposition, split-lot disposition, integrated bill material, capture of immediate correction actions, and the ability to escalate to CAPA for improvement. Complaints. Implementation of a standard closed-loop customer experience management process. Complaint management solution should manage intake, reporting, and capture of external quality information capturing customer feedback, product field experience, and complaints, pre-configured ISO 13485 customer feedback process, regulatory reporting, and easily escalation to CAPA and SCAR. Some of the essential capabilities of PTC complaint management system, fully integrated with the bill of material and FMEA codes to classify failures using these codes against the level, any level of the bill of material, record as reported observation using effect codes, Record as investigated with the codes and failure modes. Pre-configured sub-workflows for action steps. Return product analysis, general follow-up actions, and rapid entry for configurable screens. Easily escalated to a kappa. Pre-configured ISO 13485 customer feedback process. And regulatory reporting for EMDR, EU vigilance in Canada, etc. Closed loop quality management. A vital component of PTC's closed-loop quality management solution is the CAPA and change control processes. As we reviewed a number of compulsory processes earlier from dock control, design control, nonconformance and complaints, integration to change and escalation to CAPA were key essential capabilities. I will now show the process flows and the integration points within the processes. Initial issues can be captured in a number of different means. It can be a problem report to capture an issue or an opportunity a deviation or a waiver to capture any temporary change for a product or a process, or it can be a nonconformance or a complaint that we reviewed earlier. A problem report and deviation waiver can move to an engineering change request for further evaluation for the technical and business justification, also to plan minor or major changes depending on the track, and also establish a change review board. Nonconformances and complaints can escalate into a CAPA request which would identify root causes and define the action plan.
both change request and CAPA request, move on to a change notice. The change notice creates and executes the implementation plan. It establishes the change implementation board. It releases the changes and it audits the results. Each change notice has a number of change tasks. The affected and resulting objects define the effectivity, revise or supersede, and also if it's a mass change. Once these change tasks are completed, the change notice closes out, which moves the workflow all the way back through and closes out all outstanding change requests or problem reports, complaints or nonconformances within the process. Risk and requirements. Another very important area for medical devices is risk and requirements management. Viewing requirements and risk information as they relate to products, assemblies, and parts. Capturing the voice of the customer via requirements. Post-market surveillance, capturing of complaints from the field. Released and in-work FMEAs and fault trees. Here is an example of requirements and voice of the customer. This particular example is showing requirements against a top-level part in the bill of material. It can be against the top level or any light item within the bill of material on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we can see the different requirements per line item. The requirements can be categorized. Here we have functional requirements as well as compliance requirements. And we also see the traceability. In this particular case, either allocate or satisfy. And the small graph at the lower right just highlights the different categories and the traceability for each one of the requirements. In this particular example, it's showing a dashboard for post-market complaints. Here we can see a report that shows the life cycle state for each of the complaints. We can also see the different failure moves associated with the complaint, as well as the circumstance for capturing the complaint. These top level reports here can be drilled into and get more specific details that are highlighted in the table at the bottom of the dashboard. Audit management. PTC has developed a best practice in support of audit management. The PTC best practice consists of leveraging the following out of the box capabilities. Projects for management of a single or recurring audit. Smart forms via desktop integration for use as master audit checklist. Project plan with auto execute used to execute the audit process and workflow. Multiple product plans can now be used within a single project. Audit observations and findings can use subtype nonconformances to officially track. If needed, audit observations and findings can escalate to a CAPA. CAPA can drive change management to resolve issues. The standard audit process consists of a six-step process with subtasks for each step. Step one being requesting the audit. Two, to create the plan and obtain approval. Three, to conduct the audit. Four, for reporting. Five, for managing the responses. And six, to complete the audit. As you can see on the right-hand side, each of the subtasks is supported by a number of compulsory processes for that particular line item. At this time, I would like to present the PTC Medical Device Overview Demonstration. I am now logged into Windchill and I've authenticated in as this user, Peter. When a user logs into Windchill, they're presented with their homepage. Their homepage consists of a, a number of tables that manages, tracks, and categorizes the information that's being managed. In this particular example for Peter, he has on his homepage two tables. He has updates, which shows a list of all the objects and information that's been recently updated. It also shows my tasks. My tasks are workflow-driven tasks. It could be on a change process or a review process that this user, Peter, needs to take action on. The home page is very configurable. If I want to come in and add different tables or add more tables to my home view, I can do that. Here I see my list of options of which I can add. For example, if I wanted to add my saved reports to my home page, I can do that. So every time Peter logs into the system, he's now presented with his saved reports as well as the updates and the task list. Also one on the whole page here, we have recently accessed, so it keeps a track or a running list of all recently asked, accessed information within the system. We can see here everything from documents to CAD parts to products uh, on the list here. It's going to very easy to navigate back to recently used material within the system. Also on the home page here, we have uh, the ability to do a, a quick search. Uh, I have documents selected here, but there's a full list of different object types that can be searched for. Everything from a part to quality records to change records uh, to CAD information can all be very easily searched from the home page. Windchill supports a, a full index search engine. So, for example, if I knew a, a partial name or number for an object or, in this case, a document, 
I could search right from my home page. Here I can see from the search it returns 118 documents for me. That's quite a bit, but if I wanted to, to make that list a little bit shorter, I can come in here and say, for example, I want to see all the documents created by me. And you see the list goes down to 89. So it did eliminate uh, about 20 documents for me. I can also very quickly come in here and see all the high-level information about these documents that have been returned from the search. If I want to come in and further search within this table, I could do that. Again, if I wanted to search for some keywords, here I can see it returned my list down to five. Again, the same information that's being tracked here that I can see, high-level information, the version, the state, when it was last modified. I can also see the document types. So within Windchill, and we'll see this a little bit later in the demonstration, we can track and store and create different types of documents. Here I happen to have a, a quality record, a test record, and I also have uh, control documents here. So for example, I see this work instruction. If I wanted to see more of the details or drill into that particular document, I can now see the high-level attributes about this document, the name, the status, uh, if it's categorized for DHF or DMR, is presented on this page for this document. And because it is a quality document, a uh, control document rather, uh, it does require training. So we can see that the training record is needed for this particular document. Winchell manages, stores, and categorizes information in different contexts. The main contexts are products, libraries, projects, and quality containers. Products are where individual products or end items have all specific product information stored. For example, bills of material, product plans, teams with roles, documentation folders, etc. Libraries are a means to group related information and data. Libraries are more general areas for broader access across the enterprise. Libraries can be constructed with folders to further organize information. In this example, we have a quality library with a number of subfolders to further organize information. The project context is for creating, managing, and executing projects. Projects provide a means for collaboration as well as product pl planning with supporting documentation, teams, roles, resources, etc. The quality contexts are a means to organize and manage quality information and records via quality divisions for an organization and or for suppliers. Quality records to include complaints, nonconformances, CAPAs are created and managed within quality divisions. Quality records can also be created from a user's home page. So as Peter, on Peter's home page, as shown earlier, can come in and add tables or information to each user's home page. So as Peter, I've now added a table where I have the ability to create a new CAPA request, a nonconformance, or a new customer experience, also known as a complaint. Let me walk you through the process of creating one of these quality records. So if I wanted to create a new complaint, it's first looking for some high-level attributes. I can come in and say the date in which the complaint occurred. I can add the location. It's actually coming in from a hospital. Add the country and how it was reported via the website. Also within Windshield, we have some primary codes here for codification to classify the complaint. In this particular case, it happened to be a malfunction of one of our products. Let's select malfunction. Add any summary or description information. I can also add additional information for people and places. So the actual person that may have logged the call or further information where this event may have taken place. Come in and add a person who actually logged the call. And this person was the initial reporter, and he is the primary contact. You can also add product information to the complaint. We know it's one of our dialysis machines. You can now add that product to the complaint. 
it was one quantity and this is the primary product for the complaint. You can now work through the workflow. Any attachments or supporting documentation can be added at this point, or if I had any other associations with this complaint, I can be added as well. So I'm just going to finish this complaint, and I've now logged that complaint within the system. Another very important aspect to the medical device solution is reporting. As shown earlier, the reporting tool is very powerful, configurable, easy to learn and easy to use. At this point, I'd like to walk through a couple examples of the reporting tool. From Peter's homepage, the table view has been added for reports. This is a list of several examples of quality reports that Peter has access to. Quality records for CAPA, nonconformance, complaints, as well as number of control document reports. The first example I'd like to show is for CAPA. This CAPA report has a number of charts highlighting products and the sources for the CAPAs. Here you can see a pie chart outlining the products, a Pareto showing the source, and then another source chart here uh, represented as the bar chart. Again, they're very configurable. If I wanted to come in and change the look on the field, or the labels, or the colors of anything, any aspects of the chart, I can do that very easily. These reports also have full drill down capability. As I select any information on the screen, I can see the table at the bottom update for the represent data that's in the chart. The next example I'd like to show is for complaints. Very similar to the CAPA report, but slightly different. Again, I can see the different forms or the different charts. Uh, here I'm representing the country at event of the complaint. I also see the, the people and the places associated with the complaints, as well as the failure mode for these complaints. Again, I can drill down and update the table at the bottom of the page with any information that's being displayed in these charts. I also want to point out that these particular reports also have navigation built in. So as I see the table view on the bottom update, I can drill into any one of these complaints and see the source data back in Windchill. So here are high-level attributes, summary, the system and any codes associated with this particular complaint. The nonconformance report is similar to the cap on the complaints report, but only reporting on nonconformances. As we can see in this report, we have three different charts here. We're looking at the names of the nonconformances, the count of the nonconformances, and also the type of nonconformance. As mentioned earlier, these charts are completely interactive. If I wanted to drill down on any one particular part, I can see the table at the bottom update. If I wanted to come in, for example, look at my nonconformance types and I want to look at, for example, audit issues, I can see my chart update, and my table update at the bottom. These are also completely uh, complete with navigation. So if I wanted to drill into any one of these nonconformances, I can go to the details page within Windchill to see the information for this nonconformance. So here I can see all related information for this nonconformance record, high level attributes, the state and its life cycle any special requests or attributes associated with it. Also, the nonconformance management tab here tracks all related parts and documents. This represents a true audible and traceable um, association to the product data, such as these documents and the parts and all other quality records. If I wanted to come into the actual product or the affected object for this nonconformance, I can go to the details page for this particular SCON card 500. And on the details page for this particular part, I can see high level information on these tabs for the structure of the bill materials, all related objects, and all changes associated with this particular part. So here I can show all my issues and my variances, uh, any change requests that I have for this particular part, as well as any affected uh, change notices for this, part, for this part. So I'm able to synchronize all my changes across engineering, manufacturing, and quality. For this particular part, the SCON C500, we notice there's a kappa associated with this particular part. If we want to look at the details page for this kappa, I come to the kappa management tab on the details page for the kappa request. From here, I can see the specific site information associated to the kappa. I can see any related personnel or locations associated with it. And I also see the affected objects that the kappa is associated to. I see my actions, my corrective action that's planned, and my preventive action that's planned. And I also see a list of other quality records here. They have to be complaints, 
that are associated in driving this kappa. So from the affected objects table on this kappa, I can navigate directly to the products that are listed here. So before I process any changes against any particular component or part, I may want to check just where this part is being used and what will be affected uh, when the change takes place. So here I see the back to the details page for my SCON C500 card. I now have a tab here that shows me where used. I select that tab and I can see that that particular part rolls up to this top level assembly uh, for my NWR dialysis therapy system. I can navigate to the details page for this top level end item. I'm now on the details page for my dialysis therapy system. From my details page, I can see such information, general information for high level metadata, uh, the attributes that are associated to it. I can also see some high level system information about this particular product, its, work, its life cycle state, uh, the context where it resides, uh, when it was last modified, who last modified it, etc. Also along the top for this particular product, they have a number of tabs here with, where I can track and manage uh, the structure or the bill of information, any related objects, changes, uh, the history for this particular product, as well as anything um, associated to where this may be used. If I want to come into the structure or the bill of information, I see my bill of materials here, along with all supporting documentation and CAD information that makes it a truly a bill of information. So if I wanted to just come in here and show some related documents, I can see that my top level that I have a number of standing operating procedures, a work instruction, as well as a quality manual that's associated to the top level. Uh, at the bottom here at this sub-assembly level, I can come in here and see I, that I have some documents, uh, namely some CAD documents associated. If I want to come in here and actually show all my documents associated to that, so I can see that I have a and actually a CAD assembly associ associated to this particular uh, sub-assembly. Also for my dialysis therapy system product here, we're also collecting all the artifacts associated to the design history file as well as the device master record. Here for the table for my device history file, I can see the categories for some of the documents that are being tracked and captured for the DHF, whether they're design input, design output, uh, design and development, design verification, if I scroll down through the list, I have documents, I have all my quality records, my complaints, my kappas, all my parts, all my CAD information. So it's a, com a comprehensive integrated design history file. I can also report out on that. So if I were to report out my design history file as a PDF, I now have a full comprehensive report from my design history file in a PDF format. Again, listing all the objects that are associated to my design history file. In a similar fashion, for the device master record, I can see all my artifacts that are being collected from my device master record. Everything re that's relevant to my device master record is now stored in this table and integrated to this particular product. One other thing I wanted to point out, back on the structure for our therapy system, I mentioned where you can associate documents to the top level here. So we're showing this quality manual, the work instructions, the standard operating procedures. As an example of a document structure relating documents to each other, this 1345 quality manual, if I come into the details page, we can actually see the different parts of the structure uh, where these documents are associated to each other. For this particular manual, we can see the different sections and I can expand these uh, to show the different documents as they're structured here with the iteration and their life cycle state. For my dialysis therapy system, we also have developed and built out a product development plan. This plan consists of some high level details here as well as a schedule. The schedule consists of the five major phases of a development plan for this particular product from phase one from concept to ideation, phase two for my design inputs, Phase three for my design outputs, phase four for verification and validation, and phase five for market transfer and manufacturing. Again, in support of design controls for this particular product development plan uh, for my product. We can also see there's certain work involved and also certain deliverables for each one of these phases within the plan. Also for this product, we have folders. Folders allow you to organize, manage, and store and control access to certain documentation and pieces of information that's being managed against this particular product. 
As an example, we can see a number of different folders and subfolders that have been added for this particular product. Everything from general documentation to control and tracking, planning, reports, requirements, etc. Uh, one area I'd like to focus on here is we have a training doc, uh, training folder uh, with some documents in here. Uh, we're able to manage and control a number of different document types. In this particular example for training, uh, we have four control documents here, one for quality, one for governance, uh, one for work instruction, and another one for quality. So there's many different types of documents you can have for, uh, for records, quality uh, control documents, and also uh, approved records. So for an example, I have this one document here. If I want to come into the details page for this particular document, on the details page, I can see some high-level attributes and information about this document. Uh, it's actually a design history category. It's a design output. I can see when it was last modified, who modified it last. Uh, some other uh, high-level information about this particular document. And these layout layouts for these di different document types are all completely configurable. Uh, one thing I want to point out at the bottom here. Uh, we notice that it is a control document, so training record is needed, so we need to train against this one particular document. And we can see that in the life cycle of this particular document down here. So we can see uh, it starts in work, it goes under review to released. Uh, once it's released, it goes to an in-training state, and the people or personnel that needs to be trained against it, we have a training plan and a training matrix of all people that need to be trained against this document and actually track uh, that training within the system via a training coordinator and a training administrator. And once all the training is complete, the document moves to a, an effective state and then it becomes available uh, for you. So the control document can be any uh, standard operating procedure or any type of quality control document. And associated to this document as well as I have a, a training records up here. So I can actually see the people that have been trained against that. So I'm tracking the training records on who actually completed the training and when they completed it. So these three people have been identified uh, for the training and we tracked the training and they completed the training and then this document became uh, effective after the training was complete. From the overview demonstration, we can now see the benefits of PTC's medical device solution. We can see that it's based on out-of-the-box functionality, uses best practices for medical device industry, it provides a configuration baseline. Tools are easy to adopt. It reduces implementation effort, is upgrade compatible, and pre-configured validation packages. In summary, PTC's QMS and PLM solution have been designed and configured to accommodate the needs of medical device and life science companies. Because of PTC's architecture, it is built on web standards using industry best practices for database usage, our solutions can scale globally to account for any business need and size. Thank you.